we are just exquisitely built machines to deal with stress. So when we do anticipate that something negative is going to happen or it actually happens, we mount this um, beautiful dynamic peak response where everything is changing in our body, our blood pressure, our nervous system is more vigilant, our sympathetic nervous system is turned on, our parasympathetic nervous system has turned down so that we can have this energizing stress response. And then of course, most of our hormones are changing and going up during acute stress. Mm -hmm. Our cortisol, our primary stress hormone, our adrenaline, and that beautiful response helps us cope with whatever challenge we need to, it helps us think better and you know, be, have, have more energy. And then ideally that response shuts off. And the shut off is important and quick shut off, what we call quick recovery, is part of resilience. Well, so how quick are we talking about? Let's say you're interacting with uh, a, a child, your, your partner, or mm -hmm. somebody at work, uh, you get rattled by it, it's irritating. What's realistic? Mm -hmm. We can recover, you know, within our nervous system can can actually go back to baseline within minutes and our hormones, let's say within 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. The trick is that we keep it alive in our mind and we keep thinking about it or we mm -hmm. stay in the conflict situation. And that's when we get kind of a, a prolonged stress response that can just wipe out our energy and vitality. And it doesn't help with problem solving. So I think the, the it's that... Uh, when the acute stress becomes chronic, that's what we want to think about and watch for and just think, okay, this is, this is a time for taking a break, giving our body a break. Problem solving doesn't necessarily happen at the peak of, of stress. Hmm. That's very good. Well, we'll definitely get into strategies. And I know that you've developed a number of good ones. Um, before we go further, what are some of the effects on the body of this sort of chronic, even mild to moderate stress? Mm -hmm. One of the things you keep touching on, Rick, is when people have this mild ongoing level and they're kind of living with these situations that are making them annoyed, irritated, worried, that's different than that peak and the recovery. Right. And that's a state we often live in, which is vigilance. So our autonomic nervous system is living up here at a high tense level instead of down here where we want to be when we don't need to be activated. Yeah. Um, and coping. So that's the price of this kind of low-grade chronic stress arousal that we might not even notice. But once we start attending to the body and the mind and doing some mind-body practices, that's when we can actually start regulating it and bringing that habit level of tension down. Mm -hmm. When we're having that habit level of tension up, uh, Sounds like some major weeks, if not months and years of my life. Looking back. <laughs> um, how does that hurt the body over time? We're really well equipped for that acute stress response, no harm done. But when we have that response in a more exaggerated way, day after day, that is as potent as, for example, smoking. We know that stress in certain forms can actually lead to earlier disease and mortality. So, and one form of stress, which is when we feel isolated and lonely, is uh, kind of our best example in science of how that predicts early mortality in the same effect sizes if we were smoking every day. You're saying that feeling lonely mm -hmm. and happy can take as many years off your life or expose you to serious health problems as much as regular smoking can. Exactly. Wow. Loneliness is a serious form of chronic adversity or social stress. We are social beings, we need people.